thank you very much for this opportunity to present once again for some of yours and uh, for the first time this uh, service online that we have for playing with ontologies. And uh, preparing this, we decided to present it today in a slightly different way than usual. And also we have a brand new Ontomy since last week, and Vincent will, told, will tell us more about this. He will present some aspects of this ontology management environment. And myself, I will raise a question that you can read there on the title. But before moving on to the topic, let me thank my colleagues, developers, Jamel Ferro and Alexandre Perron, uh, who works for CNRS, the National Research Center in France, which is also a way of funding research on the long term. It's what we call the Exception Francaise, which is a real opportunity for having infrastructure lasting. And of course, Vincent, who is co-leader uh, of this project and product owner of Ontomy. And here we'll have the project, the pleasure of presenting you this brand new version that we have that allows to do many things that we need if we model conceptually ontologies and interlinked them. But before to give a look at that, let's go to the use case that many of us, of you, have. Everyone has, in modern digital project, a research agenda which has to be uh, developed using data. So you have research data and a research data model. And this model suits for your needs in your project. You have a research agenda, you develop this. The question is raised or becomes uh, an issue for some of us, or if interest is then in sharing the data and making the model understandable. You have your conceptualization, your nice model of your domain, fine grade, at, at really speaking also the vocabulary that your users uh, have in their project, the researchers. And now if you want to make it interoperable with another model, you need to share the conceptualization. You need to share some high-level classes. This we all understand. But which one? Shall we use CDOC CRM? Some people do. Shall we use Dolce, Dolce Ultralight and this, uh, this uh, foundational ontologies developed in Italy or by 10 colleagues? Or um, go to schema.org, which is more standardized in some social uh, networks aspects. This is the difficult question because uh, for this, you need to be a trained in, uh, semantic engineer to answer this question, but we are not, so how to do it? So from a general perspective, we know if we have some practice semantic engineering that foundational ontologies at the top allow you to have some basic concepts like events, time, there will be, there will be the new extension W3C uh, standard for modeling temporal entities, time, which is quite near to the way of doing things in CDOC CRM and Dolce also. This is the foundational aspects, speaking about time, places, and so on. But this is too general in a way. So you need to have a core ontology, so-called core ontology, which is for your domain, still having general classes and so on. So you have to consider all this. Then the general ontology um, is there, but you need more specific shared classes that you can share with other people besides the ones your project. And this one could call domain-related extensions of this core ontology. And then you have your data model in your project. So if we go this way, this whole <clears throat> way down and up again and discuss on these levels, we have interoperable data models. But how to do this? Data for History was created also in the vision that we can do this together. 
And some of us are working on that, and we propose today a possible way of doing this. So we propose to use as a foundational level Dolce and the descriptions and situations ontology, which is not the same, it's parallel and must be seen together, which is called Dolce Plus, and also some, uh, some other aspects, principles in modeling, object-oriented modeling, so that we first model on the conceptual level with these methods to have some kind of clean, onto clean, clean uh, way of conceiving things with events, places, and so on. Then we can use, this seems reasonable, and some people are doing this, it's a proposal. Yes, you can take it or leave it or propose something better. We propose to use the CDOC CRM for the core ontology. Not all the classes, but some of the classes which are usable. And to extend it, which would what we call a semantic, uh, semantic data for history, uh, for um, humanities, sorry, semantic data for humanities and social sciences. So have an extension with classes at the core level that do not exist in CDOC CRM or are not explicit enough, but that we need. We need know as researchers that we need these classes. So we have this high level core ontology built together by these two components and then can have some specific extensions. We can use the ones that are already present in the CDOC CRM community, if useful, usable, or we can develop our own in this new community that can uh, develop around this extension for humanities and social sciences which can be, for instance, an extension for literary life, writing letters, writing diaries, or about education, university history, or ships and navigation, and, and trips from, uh, from uh, the Europe to other places, or, and back, or back, and so on. And have classes and, that, and properties that can be generally used. Then, of course, we still need a certain level at project level where you have the really specific classes for your project. But you do not have to have all the classes because you can take some classes from the existing ones and just add what is missing and add it in a consistent way. So instead of having your local separate domain specific data model, you could have the same, but using already existing classes and extending what is needed or labeling things in a slightly different way so to make it understandable. And if you do this, then you have interoperable research data because then the model is clear and shared, conceptualized according to the principles of the foundational ontologies, referring to a core ontology and extensions and understood in this sense by the whole community. And of course, we know this you cannot invent for everyone. This is a shared process. You need communities, groups developing all the different aspects, discussing, testing the high level concepts, the core ontologies. This was the basic idea of Data for History to do this work together. For doing this work, of course, you will uh, probably think you need a tool because without tooling, it's impossible to uh, have this kind of complex uh, reasoning and discussion about modeling. And that's why we built Ontomy and proposed to use Ontomy, which is like web protege in a way, but more extended on some functionalities that were then, four years ago, and probably still missing in Web Protege. And now I give the floor to Vincent to present these um, different functionalities. Uh, I don't know, Vincent, if you would like me to first uh, uh, um, draft the three aspects, or if you can show the slide yourself, or you comment this and then show what you prefer. Oh, yes, please. 
you can you can comment this slide and i will uh, continue with the anatomy demonstration then okay so you will hear it twice but probably it makes it more understandable because because it's quite sophisticated yes in the in the end uh, the, the the time time uh, flow flow we are now at a quite complex stage of development that makes things very interesting usable but not easy not complex yes so the first level is discover you would like to discover all these existing models cdoc crm but also other ones you just use ontomy to discover and learn then you can build, this is the first stage, application profiles. And application profiles allow you to take from existing classes like uh, Ferber OO or the extension for education universities, some classes and properties that you'd like to use, not the whole of them, just some classes, properties, make an application profile out of that and use it in your project. So you can consume this application profile through an API, see it in your project, use the technology that you prefer, have it exported in JSON or in OWL XML, other also for um, serialization or formats, if you prefer, uh, you can tell us, we can develop it or you can develop this with us. You see then that some classes are missing because the domain is not yet covered, because you need more specific classes for more specific research agenda, you can then have your own namespace in which you could add just the missing classes, the specializations, not the whole, not have like once again person and temporal entity, because this is not needed. For this, you have the application profiles. But you can make exactly the research uh, model that you want to have for yourself. And then, of course, there is the fun of intellectual, never-ending intellectual discussions in the community to decide if a person is really an actor or not, and so on and so forth. This is the community and experts in semantic engineering struggling like philosophers in all the times about uh, the application of all these kind of things to the real world. These are the basic use cases, and now Vincent, it's to you. Yes, th thank you, Francesco. Uh, perhaps I will share my screen. Yes, thank you. Okay, you should see my screen now. Uh, yes, do you see the, my, my screen on Tommy? No, you don't see the. You don't see my. Uh, not yet. My I screen. believe myself. I do yeah. not see it. Yet. Not yet. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it says me that it, it's okay. So <laughs> I'm a bit. Probably there is a delay because uh, your network is not very quick. Yeah. How? Uh, um, Vincent, all what we see is a black, um, black yes. screen. Oh. Okay, I, I try. Okay. Nothing. Still black. It's being embarrassing. <laughs> That's yeah. normal. Hmm. <laughs> I think it's always a mark of quality uh, if technical things go wrong at yeah, the age true. conference. Yeah. It's a guy in <laughs> Would you like me to share and uh, tell me what to do? I think it's really difficult, but I think it's black because yes, if it doesn't work, I think it, we see that the the stream, the the, the 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 connection that you have is not so good, and probably this makes uh, the pixels not but, coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm very sorry about this. Um, okay, perhaps so, Francesco, it's better you you share your, your screen on the on the me. Okay, we, we try to uh, to be uh, in, in phase. Yes, great. I, I see your pages. That's good. Yeah, you are very. <laughs> yes, thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, so what is Antomi? Uh, Antomi is uh, an online application which is uh, developed by the 
uh, maintained by the digital history research team of the Lara Lab in Lyon, in the context, of course, of the Data for Historic Consortium. Uh, Anatomy is more precisely a software as a service, um, a little like Twitter, uh, uh, that provides an ontology management environment. Anatomy is not uh, distributed, it is only accessible at Anatomy.net, just there. Uh, this provides a single community-driven place to collaboratively design ontologies and application profiles. Access to Anatomy is totally free. You just need to create an account to enjoy all the features. Can you uh, log in, please, Francesco? Oh, you are already uh, to show how to, to log. Log out and log in. Yes, just click on login and you can create then uh, an account in, uh, in Anatomy. <laughs> And once you are logged in, you can access uh, to a user guide which is being uh, uh, written. Uh, uh, and if you can show us a user guide, please, Francesco, uh, you uh, <laughs> you can access to the just then to the GitHub. We uh, this is a specific GitHub where you are welcome to report bugs uh, you may discover. But also uh, any suggestion that could be useful uh, to improve the application. So feel free to uh, to report uh, issues there. It will be will be very welcome. Thank you. Um, by the way, uh, as you said, Francisco, we are very proud uh, proud to present today the brand new version of Anatomy that has just been released. It's a kind of world premiere today. So uh, enjoy. <laughs> uh, what can Anatomy be used uh, for? Uh, as you said, Francesco, and I can be uh, more detailed, uh, uh, I will say more details. Uh, it, you can use Anatomy to discover ontologies, the CDOC CRM and its extension. For instance, you can work to the class trees, the class history. It's a very useful feature. You can uh, look at the different classes. And for example, Paul uh, to uh, to find the E5 event, which is a very important class for us uh, historian, and to have the, the pass to the class. Yes, it works. And then you can click on the, the class if you want to uh, uh, to see more details about about this class, uh, to uh, to discover the, for example, the yeah the first the summary of the class to to see all. Uh, uh, the, the, the details about the class in, in a kind of uh, CDOC CRM way. If you if you know the, the PDF files of CDOC CRM, we try to have a similar way to, to present things. And uh, then in different tabs in the uh, the class, you can uh, then uh, uh, browse the different parts of the class. And for example, the properties. Uh, in the properties tab, you have the properties of the, 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 the class, but it's a very important feature. You can ch see through the inherited properties from ancestors from the class. So here you have the list of all properties you can use with the, the class, which, is, which are uh, inherited from ancestors. And uh, to, to see uh, which ancestors have the, the, this class, it, uh, you can open the hierarchy tab and you see the parent class of the, the, the class event and the ancestor class the, with the, the depth of the relation and the, uh, the path taken to reach the class. Uh, the same for the child and descendant classes. So you, you can have the, all the context of the, of the class in, in, a few, uh, uh, in a few tabs. It could be very useful to discover how to use uh, uh, this kind of this class. And then, <coughs> yeah, for example, yes, the class both. Once you are familiar, familiar with the models and have a research project, you can start to model and conceptualize your information, probably at first on your own uh, on a sheet of papers, like a lot of people do. And then you can create a project. Uh, if you can go to the project menu, please, Francesco. Uh, yes, first in the menu the, of the projects. And you, here yeah, you see a, a lot of projects already uh, uh, started. 
and a project is a kind of empty shell that allows you to associate members, uh, create namespaces and application profiles. But it simply allows you to fight on the namespace that you want to display. If, for example, you can uh, activate the uh, Atlas of States, uh, Francesco, you, I think you are a member of this project. Yes, you can activate it in your uh, own... Uh, yes, there, because you you can have a lot of different uh, projects, you can make member of different projects, but you, you can activate only one project to, to work on it. Uh, yes, that's it. You have activated the Atlas of States. And if you go now to the My Current Namespaces, yes, there, you see, and you deactivate the profile. Oh, yes. If you go now in the class, uh, classes list in the <coughs> menu, you can see you have no class because only the, the thing with the, which is the mother of all classes because uh, all the, the, the namespace uh, you, you see in the application are uh, filtered in your uh, own dashboard. You can, for example, now uh, Francesco add only the CDOC CRM to, uh, the, to my current namespaces and you, you will be, you now can browse only in the CDOC CRM classes and properties. Because you see, there is a lot of namespaces, and if perhaps you can, you don't want to have the uh, uh, dig CRM digital extension, uh, you don't want to have the CRM RKO, just only the core uh, CDOC CRM. And the, by this uh, um, feature, you can filter the, the, the namespace you want to, to, to display. Okay. Once you have discovered all this, once you have an idea of the namespaces you want to use, You're, you can you realize that there are many classes, uh, 19 classes, I think, in the CDOC CRM. Uh, and you want to... <clears throat> and uh, it is likely that perhaps for your project, uh, that a dozen classes and just as many properties could be sufficient to model the data of your project. What Anthony proposes then, and which is quite un unique, are application profile. And if you can open the profile menu, please, Francesco, we can see all the existing profile. We create it on the profile, <coughs> the profile which have already been created by the community. Uh, an example, perhaps, which very, uh, people uh, is very interesting in, is the, the bi biographical data. Um, we'll, so we will open the biographic basic and family profile. And uh, for example, in this uh, profile, uh, We have, uh, in the ongoing uh, version of this profile, we have selected some classes and properties there, yes, uh, which uh, are very useful to uh, model the uh, bibliographical aspects of a person. Birth, death, union, and, uh, and, and so on. And this, you can see these uh, classes are coming from different namespaces. Uh, obviously, an ontological compatible. You can even choose to, if you, if you need to, here yeah, in the property, to restrict the range of a property. So, uh, to do this in the classes uh, menu, uh, in, uh, if you have the right to do this, you can, of course, edit the, uh, the different classes and uh, choose the, wh which properties you can add to your profile by uh, classes and you can even if you click on pick properties uh, restrain the range of uh, a property uh, for example if you you see the p96 uh, by mother uh, gave birth uh, i don't know if there is a child class of person but you can try no uh, <laughs> this is not a good example um, but another one Yes, this one is, is great. It's a great example. Uh, uh, you want to say that the birth, there is only person uh, part participating uh, in, in the birth and not actor. Uh, it could be actor, it could be an, a company. So there is no company participating in a birth. And you say, in my project, I, will, I want only to say that okay, there is only person uh, uh, participating in the birth. This is, uh, this is okay because a person is a subclass of actor. And, uh, which is the, uh, the official range of the, the, the property. 
Yes, and once all the classes and properties have been chosen, you can view all this in a graph in web wall. If it works, yes. Yeah. Et voilà, you have all your classes and properties you have chosen in your profile, and you can visualize them in a graphical and dynamically way. Okay, now um, let's say that uh, what I'm interested in is broader than just biographical events. For example, I want to model higher education and academies. So, uh, Francesco Hyde are members of the uh, higher education project, so we can activate it. Yes, yes, you're right, you have to clean <laughs> the profile before <laughs> closing it. <laughs> and so, yes, please, if you can activate your project of uh, higher education, Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And so uh, uh, we have created this uh, particular uh, specific project to, uh, to modelize the, uh, all the aspects of higher education uh, and academies uh, uh, domain. Uh, if you open, yes, the, please, the, the project, uh, you can see we have created uh, a namespace because if necessary, you can add a namespace to your project. This one, for example, higher education and academy to create, like Francesco said just a moment ago, to create missing classes and properties that I cannot find in another namespace. In this case, a study, study title, obtain a study title is very specific classes to my own, my own domain, my own project. Oh, okay. But how oh, about how I, I can create as many profiles uh, as I want. So if I open my, my project in the profiles tab, I can add different profiles, uh, the, for example, education and teaching, each one uh, uh, with classes and properties uh, selected, chosen for a specific meaning, which is education with each teaching. And these classes could, could be uh, uh, could belonging, could, could belong, sorry, to uh, different namespaces like this one, CDOC CRM, higher education, CDOC CRM, uh, SDHS uh, extension. But since um, I can, could be uh, also interested uh, in, uh, in the biographical events of scholars, I have two possibilities. I can uh, add the necessary classes and properties to my profile, but if it's, it's more relevant and interesting, uh, I can also have the, the possibility to use uh, profiles created by the community that match my needs, like the bibliographical uh, profile I show you, uh, we show you, uh, uh, earlier. So you can here just uh, at the, the, this place, you this profiles like bibliographical, uh, so bibliographical, uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> uh, life, I don't know, don't remember the name exactly. Sorry, I can see in, yeah, biographical basics and family. And uh, for example, the education uh, profile, which is the, the profile created in the, the project. These profiles are published in the Anthony API as part of my project and can be easily accessed by my information system or any uh, virtual research environment like, for example, GeoVistory or my, my own database if I can connect to the API of the uh, uh, Anthony. And best of all, uh, we, uh, with this uh, magic button here, OWLRGF, uh, you can view and export your profiles uh, in OWL. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Protege users will be delighted to be able to connect directly to their application and use their favorite plugins into uh, a Protege. But uh, if I may, Francesco, uh, I, I let you uh, demonstrate this part of the, the connection to, to Anthony. So thank you very much, Vincent. Uh, I thought to um, use a web protege, but I have a new laptop, and so it uh, does not uh, work yet here. So I have to switch my screen. First of all, you see we have these two. Do you hear me? Yes. You hear me, Vincent? Do you hear yes, me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, I, I hear so, you. I, I hope uh, the these two. <laughs> This is the, but I do not see because I see my screen and so on. So uh, here is the, uh, there are the active profiles. And when you go to this API, 
this is just a placeholder where you can then uh, copy the link to the API. Then you can see the classes and properties that are in these two profiles. This is still um, under development. We are because we have the brand new version, so also the APIs are coming now, the new ones. So it's at the moment uh, the APIs are beta. The application is now uh, not beta anymore in a way, but the APIs, yes. So you have these two. And I will show you in Protege uh, what happens. And because I will uh, sh stop sharing the screen and uh, just see Protege, I tell you now that after, uh, for the example, you will see what you see um, these two profiles at the beginning. And then I would like to add membership because the membership profile is used also um, to um, model the fact of being member of an academy or of a body in the university and so on, legal body. So um, I will click here and if I click here, this profile comes here. But for the moment, I will not do it. But just afterwards, when I share Protégé, you see Protégé. I will go back here, you will not see it. I will add it in the same way here, clicking here. And then we will see what happens in Protege if everything works fine, because I tested it five times, but <laughs> normally when you show this, then it doesn't work. So let's stop this presentation here. Uh, let's find where uh, the button for changing the view is. So you see now my protege. Yeah. And here you see exactly these classes that uh, you saw in the uh, ontomy profiles. So if you're interested in in seeing like uh, for instance the birth that we saw, you have here the birth and you have the different properties. I will do a refresh. Okay. With the different properties, I took away the one where there was the presence of the person. It would be here after the refresh. And now I go back in the onto me and add the memberships. Come here. You see these are the classes that are active and you can reload from the API. And now you have also the classes about the membership that appear. So this is the place where we started in the beginning. Normally you would do your own model here and then uh, model this and then use also if you are used to do this, uh, it's hidden by the video, the ontograph, so that you can um, see, for instance, what you have around membership. And so on, and this comes. This data comes directly from onto me. And then, if you need a property that is missing, or you want to take one away, and you want to do some reasoning on this, you can do it in Protege. So use all the power of Protege for working with the model that you designed in onto me. And the last conclusion is here. Okay, so what we propose, if you're interested, you can contact us on, on these links, the one showed by Vincent. If you have trouble with using Ontomy, you can put an issue there or write to us. We can provide Ontomy trainings, so don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We plan, we'll speak more about this next time, to have engineer, semantic engineering workshops for, 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 for us, like seeing what is in your models, what you would like to have, what we should bring in as new classes. And of course, we would be very happy if you join the project and the developers community and help us to develop this. Is everything is on GitLab, we could go one day open source, but we need some help for doing this because we need the whole documentation and so on. And uh, it's, it's a huge task. Thank you.